it's just the connection, I think. So, so it's not the same as the. Um, no, it's not the same yeah. as like we sorted that. We can touch wood. Yeah. All right then. So, Hi, everyone. Um, welcome, Fabrizio. Um, Thank you. Um, Hi. Um, I think we'll make a start. Let me just put um, somebody in the meeting in the waiting room, I think, members of the public. So okay. I'm just going to enter, let them in. Bear with me a second. Right. <clears throat> can you all hear us on the other end, um, Terry? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah no, it's pretty clear now. That's good. Mm -hmm. uh, what Ben said right now, it is very clear. Good. Yeah. I will be joining with on another phone because I'm traveling. So. Well, I think that's Keith as well. Welcome, Keith. Hello. Are you all right? Hi. Yes, thank you. You're... Good. Hello, all. Yeah, not too bad. You good. Yeah. Hello, Andy. Hello, Tom. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello Keith. Hi, Keith. Mm -hmm. Hello, Ed. Hello. And thanks for today. You saw the response. Yeah, it's it, it really bad. Yeah. Uh, well, every time I go to the post office, obviously there's a little bit of rubbish. And I pick up one or two items because there's bins either side as that pathway zigzag through. But today, yeah. it really was noticeable. There was just a field of uh, plastic across the green. Right. And it's um, just that bit between the Bromford flats. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly down to them there, you, you know, I mean, but uh, it's one for Bromford to take up with uh, their residence, really. Well, they're looking out for something. That, that, well, one of the, sorry, we digress quickly. Yeah, one yeah. of the piles is obviously from somebody having decorations done because it is just 10 to 15 paint pots, oh. sheets, and... Um, um, yeah. Uh, so mind, uh, uh, do you mind if we? Sorry to interrupt you. But, yeah. Um, we're going to try and get on if you don't. That's no, right. Okay, lovely. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, the emergency evacuation procedure, I think, in the room is is all is well known. Um, I think we're filming. Are we? Are we filming? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Filming. Um, and number of point number one is uh, submissions from the public, and I think you said. Um, Sharon, that there is a member of the public uh, joining us. There it. Yeah. Okay, so the floor is yours. I'm assuming then that they're just observing the meeting rather than having oh, anything. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I should. Can I hear? Yes, I can hear you, Tom. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to update you again that the the next com uh, community engagement forum meeting is on the 9th of March. Um, so invite to Tuesday. So I invite everyone, all the councillors and the community members to it to attend. So yeah, there was an update. So I just wanted to correct it. Okay. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, so point two is to receive any apologies for absence. Yes, I have apologies from Councillor Michael Hill. Okay, lovely, thank you. Um, three declarations by members under the Local Government Act 1972. I take it there's none. Okay, uh, point four, announcements by the Chair. I don't have any announcements to make. Uh, point five, to confirm the minutes of the meeting of the 23rd of December 2020 as a correct record. Yep, move that. Yep, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, lovely, thank you. Um, what do we do, Sharon, in this case? Because... Um, Sorry, seconded. Keith proposed. Tom seconded. Can you take a vote on that, please? Hands up. Unanimous, thank you. Um, you could ask the Chair of Council to sign on your behalf. Um, the Chair of Council? Yes, Tony, he's here. Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't even say hello to him. I'm hello. so sorry, Tony, I didn't even know that you were here. I'm really sorry. Well, I, I will plead with you then. Do you mind signing on my behalf? Thanks. 
this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It was last time as well, actually, wasn't there? Sorry about this. on 23rd of December, not covered elsewhere on the agenda. 6.1, Pinch Point on Shared Brookway, Pedestrian Stroke Cycleway, SUC, Local Transport Priority List, link to COVID-19 social distancing. Um, shall I give you the, um, I chased that blogs yeah, I saw that, yeah. last week uh, about the meeting that they said that they were arranged and they said um, with the current state of play and the current government message planning a site meeting at this time would not be wise as you may be aware there will be an announcement by the government on the 15th of february so we should wait till then and hopefully be given a clearer message on how things will be going forward in the short term and if current restrictions will be relaxed or not yeah i think that's a very pragmatic way of looking at things isn't it so Okay, thank you for that, Sharon. Um, 6.2, uh, South Gloucestershire Council tree planting in Bradley Stoke. I've seen you sent an update on that one. Uh, well, again, I chased them last week to see if they could give us an update with regard to the planting in Bradley Stoke, because we haven't heard anything um, regarding the final locations. Um, I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Um, I have observed the fact that there are a number of trees that have been planted on the highway verge on Brook Way by the Patchway Brook Roundabout. I don't know whether that's linked to this tree planting project or whether it's because they were looking at replacing some of the trees when they cut the ash tree down on the junction of Oak Tree and Brook Way. So I haven't heard that from them yet. So. Is there anything, Keith, is there anything that we need to do about that then? As, as Sharon said, she's observed those that, that, that happening. Do we need to do anything? Well, I mean, you you could contact uh, Leah Bendin in um, South Gloss. She's on the uh, Arborist team. She's moved slightly. I think she's to, she's actually dealing with all the um, applications now. So it may well be something that's on their radar. Uh, there is a fair bit of tree work going on around the whole of South Gloss at the moment. Uh, I noticed in quite in the Little Stoke Park there's trees that have been cut back. Uh, the debris has been left on the ground. Obviously there's the inevitable gypsy patch, which Sharon knows about, uh, which is all those healthy, living, undiseased trees which they're taking down this week. Um, to allow for the gypsy patch uh, widening, but um, I gather there's some uh, some extra work there that needs to be done, but that'll come out probably in our update later. Um, <clears throat> I would just contact our arborist team, Sharon, and uh, speak to Leah Bendin and see what she can uh, see what she can advise on this one. Yeah, I will certainly do that. Thanks, Keith. And bear in mind, we've just um, taken up our own tree policy. So I would uh, hope that they're not going to plant any of these trees too close to people's houses, which has always been the case in the past, because as we said last week, squirrels do climb trees. <laughs> and they will get into those houses and call, ha cause havoc in their roof spaces, if yeah. they can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right, that's lovely. So that's an action um, for, for Sharon to follow up. Okay, lovely. Uh, thanks, got your hand up as well. Chair. Sure. Um, it'd be nice to know that what they're doing around Oak Tree Crescent, or whether or not that was to replace the 60-year-old ash that they took down on the corner. Yeah, I'll ask. Yeah. Yeah. Leah Bendin, shut up. 
Circumstances we can't live without these poles because everybody wants their coverage. But uh, unless there's anything drastic, I'll move it. Yeah, I think you're right. Every minute I've got. Like two year old out, isn't it? Yep. Right, okay, so that is the location. And then I can show you what is there at the moment. So that this is what is there at the moment. And this that's what's proposed. Because there's one of those at the tree that there is, isn't it? It's two of them. Yeah, one woodland, isn't it? Is it woodland? Yeah, woodland. It's literally just up from the river. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be there. I'm not sure we've got much options well, here. People need connectivity, don't they? Yeah. Well, they're all sharing anyway nowadays, so... And at least it's in front of a, you know, a, um, commercial premises. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that, I think, was Keith proposed that one. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Tony seconded. Yeah. Can you take a... Vote on that, please, councillors. My screen's gone, Sharon. Hands up this, this end, anyway. Uh, yeah, that's a unanimous one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, there we go. Sort the next one out. Right, the next one is P210043F, the erection of single storey rear and side extension to form additional living accommodation at 49 Rosemary Close. Right, so on the it is this house on the end here. So it's this house here, the back of that one there. So I Side of drive. Right, so that's what's there at the moment. Who 
and that's what's from home. Going from that to that. You can also actually show you the um, listing and proposed block plans, that's quite helpful. Okay, so that's what's there at the moment and that's what's proposed. Yeah. I think it's the other way around, isn't it? No, that this is this it's is just a, oh sorry. No that no, it's to go right. this is proposed at the bottom. Yes, no, I think they've got that round the wrong way because oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, what's there at the moment and they're yeah, filling in. I think it's their wording that's round the wrong way on the bottom. Yeah, that's right actually, yeah. Sharon, can you show sorry. No, sorry. Go, no go Can on. you show the side and drive elevation? Yes, certainly. Yeah, sure. Proposal. Um, existing side and drive elevation. Mm -hmm. So that's what's there at the moment. That's what's proposed. Now, the drive, the one that you showed first, didn't that show a shared drive between the other house? Yeah, I think it was shared, but it was very, very clearly demarked, demarked wasn't it? So, it's just that actually this is... that looks quite a lot bigger than the side bit on this plan, doesn't it? It's yeah. one, yeah, you yeah. see, there. Uh, is that a carriage there, at the back? That bit, what you put you? Yeah, yeah, it's on the next doors, Tony. It's a shared drive, I thought it was, going in. And they're going to go out like Harry. That's it, exactly. It's going to narrow. There, look. Where that, where that yeah. car is, they're going to be coming out on the side there. Yeah. There's still, yeah, but there is still space. Between... Yeah, there's space. Is there any comments from anybody on that one as yet? Or when was it posted up on the site? since the um, 8th of Jan, so it's been in the system a long time. The right. comment on there is uh, from a neighbour supporting it. Supporting it, right, okay. Which, which, which side of the house? Doesn't say, which, yeah, which, yeah, which number? Doesn't say. They don't tell you that, they just say they don't give the address of whoever it is. Could, could be the other neighbour, couldn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it yeah. I mean, what what do you think, uh, everyone? I mean, if we could say, you know, subject to uh, the space for the drives being sufficient. Yeah, Ed's got his hand up. Oh, sorry, I can't see uh, Ed's hand up when the the screen's taking up. Uh, yeah. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to take on the point that when when you bracket it something, um, oh, sorry. I just want to get away. The, the, the question is is that what mandatory access has to be that gets behind there? So if you said that's an ambulance, or you said that's a fire engine, then of course you have to take in the width and height restrictions of that gap going through. Now, the other thing is, if someone has a caravan, yeah. it goes through the gap, because otherwise you are restricting, you know, certain vehicular access that you would have to uh, um, put notice of. You know, height six foot two, no vehicle wider than. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying you can't have the planning, but what I'm saying is, if there is restriction, then there must be the appropriate notices in place. Is See, the problem really, is that really the case? Is well, the problem you've got, got the problem you've got is it will come back to their deeds or what caveats are in their deeds. But in planning terms, it's a civil matter, and that's what you know they won't get involved in it. But I'm looking at this from the point of view that they are narrowing the access to the garages, which I presume. One could be theirs and could be their own side, if you like. But they're narrowing effectively all of that drive as it is now 
And also, is there a side door accessing out onto that uh, drive? That's the front door key. Where oh, is that? Uh, the, the front door's on that side elevation. I think you find there's a door as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could, you, could, we just, could we just hear what Andy's got to say? Andy's got his hand yeah. up. So could we hear what Andy's got to say? I was just looking at the plan that Sharon had up before. And if you look where the front of the house narrows and the driveway comes over to the left-hand side, the actual space there is not significantly different to the space after the extension is built by the way of the driveway. If you, if you go back to that one you were on before, Sharon, with the proposed and... On the second up, Tony's just trying to read something out. Not that one, the, the block plan one. No, it was the um, Tony. It was just, it's just. Yeah, I, I think I know what you mean, Andy, actually. Right, sorry, which one did you say, Andy? This one? The block plan. Yeah, yeah. If, you look, if you look at the space where the uh, red boundary is with the new extension, and then you look at the, the corner of the front of the house, it's not actually that much different. That bit there, you mean? Yeah. yeah. But that gap is not actually that much different because the driveway kind of comes across to one side, doesn't it? Yeah. So if, you, if you look at their boundary, which is effectively where your pointer was, <laughs> where you've got a garage, um, by filling in that point, they're not going to have any real access on their own drive coming into that garage. They're yeah. going to have to access from the neighbour's side. You get my point? Yeah. The neighbour's yeah, side in their garage. I would have thought, you know, there, there would have probably have been an issue there, but uh, it's all down to caveats and deeds and all the rest of it, but I'm surprised they haven't complained up to now. They may in the future, of course, but um, I just look at that, uh, the, the way that boundary comes in on their side. Um, you're right, Keith. Yeah, I agree absolutely, because it just means that they will have to drive over the neighbour's drive to get yep. to, to get out to their own garage. And as Ed said, I mean, if ever they had a motor home or caravan or whatever, I mean, there's not a lot of room there left on their own boundary side, even in front of their garage. Mm. I think Ed had his hand up then. Yeah, the other thing you must consider is that while the neighbours there are all friendly, yeah. and neighbour A is saying, I don't mind, you can come over. They sell the house. Yep. Neighbor X moves in and says, oh, oh, oh no, no right. chance. But then yeah. I suppose that that's, that's the key point. Yeah, yeah. So, isn't that Keith's point about being a civil matter then? It is civil in planning but terms. We have, to, we, we, we have to make sure, as councillors, that we understand the aspects of that and nip it in the bud. Yes. And say, his, his reasons for us to pause this, because what we don't want to do is be open to, well, you knew you were going to drag me into a civil litigation. Why didn't you make a suggestion at the beginning? And yeah. we know that. Mm. So we have the duty to say, hang on a minute, we're not experts, but we have enough experience overall to recognise where there is a, a potential issue for somebody. So let's pause get it clarified, and if it goes ahead, then everyone's happy because those points have been overcome. Yeah. See, looking at the house oh, next to... Looking at that house next to 53... The one. The neighbour. The, the neighbour property. If he was to do something similar, there wouldn't be a lot of drive left to drive through to get to garages, would there? No. Uh, Ben's got his hand up in here. I don't know whether you can see that, Terry. Uh, no, sorry about that. I can only see portion of the, uh, I can only see four little tiles. You can, then, you can scroll up and down on your, you should be able to like move between. Um, my, my thought's going to be, um, as much as we're talking about access to the garage, which obviously by building on the side there, they're not really going to have any more. And you could look at it through a different lens because you could say, we have, and South Gloss have, approved people essentially converting their garages. They're no, they're no longer vehicular parking areas or require vehicular access. So, yeah. 
very similar type of approach. She's got plenty, well, they've got plenty of parking outside the front, on the front part of the property, which means they can't access the garage, which is probably too small anyway to fit a car in it, or any decent sized vehicle. Um, and we do, we do regularly get planning applications for people converting garages to other living purposes. Yeah. yeah. Principle is still kind of the same. You're just blocking off vehicle access to a garage, um, and we don't have an issue with that when it's being converted into a living accommodation. Yeah. But but they with the property, to... they would need at least one and a half parking spaces normally, of which the garage is one anyway. Although in real terms, if garages are small. You could say they're barely big enough to take half a car anyway. It depends what type of car, of course. Um, but you know, I mean, they aren't. They aren't sorry, they aren't, they aren't specifying parking on this application, are they? Did you make well, you can, there's two parking spaces at the front, isn't it? I think we saw on the first shot. In the net. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's plenty. There's probably three spaces there. Um, Andy's got his hand up, so could we just see what Andy's got to say? I just wanted to see, have we actually got a proper plan view, dimensional and everything? Um, yes we have, which, what would you like, do you want the proposed ground floor plan? Yeah, go on. Yeah, please. Well, if not, do what do people think we should actually propose? Well, it, there is a design and access statement as well. Is there anything written in there? A second, I'll open that one. All right, it's 33 pages long. Yeah. See where there is actually there is a vehicle on that one just to give you a, an idea of obviously on that. He's just... building out there, isn't he? Yeah. So that van will be over on the next doors. Or, or at the front. Well, yeah. we just wouldn't be able to park, would they? They would literally be losing any, well, even unless the neighbour is okay with them to move up to mm -hmm. over their property. That is the existing ground floor plan, existing roof plan, existing elevation. Oh, I don't need to read it out, read it on the screen. So I think the key, the key thing that um, is exercising everybody is the space wants the once the uh, renovations take place, is the space um, to enable the access to the garage. So, and then Ben's point is that maybe, even if you've got access to the garage now, you might not be able to get the car in there. Um, yeah. So, and there's three parking spaces out the front at least. <coughs> what, what, what does, has anybody got an idea of what we should be proposing then? I would like to say, propose to move it or, I, I, would, I would have a preference to keep access to that garage. If we do away with that access or impinge it, so it uh, it will cause neighbour issues and now and in the future, I would have thought. But I think uh, the fact is, you know, it's likely to cause issues, this. And I would not support this one. Um, that door is on the side, look. And that actually, that view that, that you just had there, Sharon, that, that actually looks much bigger than, than the block plan, doesn't it? Right, I was just going to go back and see if there's anything specific. It looks to me as if the access is almost exactly the same size as the front of the house, which is what I said earlier. Yeah. Which means but, that's, uh, that's obliterating any use of the garage for, for a car. Certainly the shape of their drive doesn't allow, look, if you build out there, doesn't allow for a lot of space, does it, to drive through? 
Well, I mean, isn't that their choice, though? If they well, want... yeah, no, it's their planning application, Terry, but I think, you know, we have a duty to look at it in the impact that this is likely to have on the adjoining neighbours as well, because their boundary is there. It's a shared boundary, after, after all, as well, look. Mm. I wouldn't be too happy with it. So, do you want to move to um, refuse it? Yeah, I would. Anybody want to second that? I'm not oh, second no. that. I'm not second right. that. Refuse it. Yeah. Burn it. Can it. Uh, and what, what, what grounds? Andy's suggesting what grounds is that? It, it seems to near enough remove the access to their own garage uh, and it would impinge uh, access down the sides of the shared drive there because it would drive, it would mean you drive on that shared boundary but with respect yeah okay, well, it's, it's their land yeah and their access if they choose to obstruct it and what I'm saying is it, 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 have we got a valid planning objection? I think it's up to transportation to look at that, to be honest. Should that be the proposal then, that we say, could transportation have a look at this and confirm they're happy with the, well... Layout and access? Well, I, I agree with Andy, though I just really think, if it was me putting this application in, I would be saying it's entirely up to me. If I want to use that garage as a dressing room or something, it's entirely up to me if I don't want to use it for parking anything in it. I, um, I think yeah. also, Terry, with, with respect, the house has been extended, so they've got extra bedrooms, and that would come in with that, they would need extra parking. But that garage does form some of their parking allocation. But there is three spaces out front. Well, it depends if they get three in there. But um, you know, I, I would certainly look at it. The main, the main uh, uh, parking there would be considered that garage for a start. That is a, a major part of their parking. The additional spaces is extra. If they didn't. Want I know, but if they don't want to use it as um, parking, that's, it seems like it's up to them. It is up to them how they use their, gar their garage. It could be turned into a utility, a gym, whatever, but, you, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's there for the purpose of putting a car in, really, but it's how they use it. But on their planning, it would have been considered as part of their parking. So do you think the best thing to do is to suggest that the... The, the, a report is 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 um, requested from the planning people, tra uh, the um, transport people. Yeah, yeah, we could ask that the transport officer look at the provision of space there uh, for access and egress off that site, because it would certainly impinge on the neighbour's property. And we don't know for sure whether it's that neighbour that's complained, do we? Or supported. But as Ben said, uh, sorry, as Ed said, when somebody moves, I'm sure it'll all come out there then, you know, it'll be in the deeds and why and ever, ever is, how did anybody allow it to happen? And, you know, boundaries so, so, are a real problem, aren't they? Okay, all right then. So, so let's just clear what, what what's the proposal then is to say that um, transportation would we need to pause it to ask transportation to look at it yeah okay anyone got is anyone seconding that yeah i'll second it hang on a minute so whatever we did last week so that didn't work that's gone off completely hasn't it no you're back now no you're back now didn't you yeah, but not with a video camera. Oh. That's turned itself off. So charging the... Let's go to the video. Oh, oh, hang on a minute. It's dropped, it's dropped, it's dropped. Yes, it's turned itself off. <laughs> it's not because you're sharing the screen, is it? And it might have changed the drivers for sharing the screen. And it's not 
It's not, it's just come up on me now. Yeah, uh, you're back, Sharon. I am, but not. We'll be back now. Yeah. Okay, right. So, you were... Um, the proposal was that um, the application is paused um, until such time as a... Um, because we literally have the time to comment on it. So you either have to be in favour or you have to object to it and then put a condition on about, no you know, like, you know, you'd object on remove the vehicle for vehicular the application removes the vehicular access to their own garage and impinges on access to the neighbouring property and asks the sustainable transport officer to review yeah. the parking provision. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll second that. If Keith wants to propose it. Yeah, yeah. Fine. So I'll second it. So can you Fine. take on that, please, councillors? Is in favour? Right, so we look for that. Tony, Steve, okay. Ed, Tom, Tom Fab. So that's five in favour. Against. One, two again. Abstentions. Oh, I see. So really move the wall out. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. What I yeah. don't like is when you come out on the front of an elevation of a house, but this one's on the back, so yeah. it's not going to be seen, is it? Other than no, by them. It's making use of their. It space. is dead space. So yeah. They got yeah. really good uh, utility space there if they extend out. Look. Mm -hmm. It's making no difference to the next door neighbour whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. I'll move uh, that one. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll second it. Take a vote on that, please, councillors. The vote in favour. Tom. Yeah, but that's that's really yeah. worth it. It's weird. It's about education. That. Really Right, the next one has a bit of a saga behind it, so bear with me a second. I don't know whether any of you have tried to look at this online. Or whether you've picked up on a very strange number of it. So it is P2123854 PDR. Which, bearing in mind, we're going to have in num numerical order, it's a bit bizarre to have a, 20, a 21 funding activation that has 23,000 number. Um, at erection single story road extension form additional living accommodation at 120 Camping Drive. So I did query that with the planning officer initially, just to find out the answer. And it was because it was originally booked in last year, then there was a delay. Or to get some more information, then they left it at P20. No, they changed to P21 in error and left the long number, so it's like 23,000 ahead of what it should be for the year. Yeah. And that just qualifies that. So then, when I went on the system to try to look at the application, as of four o'clock this afternoon, all that was on there was the South Cross site plan. I emailed planning at three times over the past week to try to get them to put the documents on. And they kept saying, yeah, we'll pass it on to the planning officer or the relevant people at the time. They, nothing was ever done. But finally this afternoon, I managed to get hold of someone in planning who then spoke to someone in technical services at like half past four this afternoon and they then managed to put something on the system. So what here is, is a bit bizarre because actually I couldn't even open it on the online system but by downloading it in the zip file, follow, I think I can now open it. So it's been a bit, I'll show you, just in case any of you would try to look at it and say, they had trouble with the portal last night. Yeah, no, this is, but the, the, the problem is because the numbers didn't match up from the one from Previous. last year. Yeah. 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 They said technically the system should have picked it up automatically, but it didn't, so it transferred the documents across because it had the wrong number on it. So it's this out here. Yeah. As I said, the individual, it wasn't some huge application for the property. <laughs> we we haven't got the application name, have we? This house over in the corner here. Who's Jersey again? What do you mean? Um, so, this what you mean? Who the applicant is? Yeah, I mean only in so far as this one rings a bell. And I got a feeling that it may have been an officer's application when it came in. I have tried this and it did open for me, so I'm hoping it did it, yeah, but it's literally has all it's come in as most things. No. It's from this bridge one. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. gone. Yeah, it's gone. On the screen. Yeah, yeah, which one? Right. 
And they've got permitted development anyway, so which is odd. Most of it's been taken away in Bradley Stone, but where does this city have got permitted development? On the application. Isn't it a PDR? Oh no, sorry. PNH. No, I, I think... Oh, yeah, not permitted not development. It's the um, Campion, isn't it? Yeah. No, they they yeah. do put them PDR on the, on the numbers, even if they've got the development rights removed, they're still called PDR. Yeah, yeah. It, but it, it clarifies that it's a per permitted development application. Or would have been if the rights hadn't been removed. Yeah. But I can't see an issue here with this one, to be honest. No, because no, it's sure. just, it's doing nothing. It's not impacting anybody else. It's just helping them. Yeah. Can I move, move it. Move it. I second that, Keithy. Yeah. Bear with me, second. Thank you, Andy. Second, me. I'll give you a mix. Welcome, Matt. Welcome, Three, four, five. Yeah, I think that's unanimous. Thank you very much. There can't be a house in the crevice that hasn't been extended, I'm sure. No. <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> I always think that's a very strange word, man. Yeah. Right, so the next one is... So, P21-000192F, erection of single storey rear extension for additional living accommodation at 32 the Christ. Good idea. Yeah, move it. Yeah. No, I think we should do that, it's exactly that. So I'm happy to second it. Take a vote on that, please, Councillor. Any favour? Is that a Keith? No, no Tom. No. Tom's disappeared. I'm trying to get my I'm trying to get my thumb to disappear. <laughs> 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 oh God, it's gone the other way now. So the more you That's try it. to do it, the more you end up with it, it keeps coming up then. So the next, the last one is um, a reconsultation. So it's P20 22589F, the erection of two-storey front extension to form additional living accommodation 
at 33 and it's close. So you had this back in um, November and councillors had no objections to it. They've now resubmitted and it is slightly reduced in size. One minute. Not coming out quite so far at the front as we were. We, 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 we approved it the last time. Yeah, we had no objections to that. But they're being consulted because if it's it small enough, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's this house, if you remember, you can go yes. and back. It's up in the corner, it's sort of squeezed in. Mm. <laughs> Transport wanted more information about the um, the parking provision, which they have provided. So the amended one is the proposed block plan. Which is that. Sorry, was that Tom? Were you trying to say to me then? That shows the you know, they've got their garage and then the parking space and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. On there. That's the proposed block plan and the proposed elevation. So if I show you what the, the plan has been superseded, so you can get up. So this is what they were aiming to do, which council didn't have a problem with. And this is what they're doing now, so they shrunk back from not going out as far. Mm. Yeah, I'll move it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, move it. Maybe one second. Thank you. Uh, Fab's put his hand up to second. No, okay. Can you take a vote on that, please, councillors? In favour? Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, In favour? I like it. I like it. Again? Yeah, taste Upstream. Right, what we want again, one said, thank you very much, councillors. Okay, thank you very much, Sharon. Stop sharing screen. Um, okay, moving on to point nine to deal with matters re referring to work within the scope of the Planning and Environment Committee not covered elsewhere. 9.1, SGC, Chris. Patchway Metro Budget Metro Bus Extension, Duplessis Patch Lane, Stakeholder Liaison Group Update. Uh, you have the um, update in your agenda pack, and then there was a meeting on Monday, and as Keith has rightly said, they have um, started to remove the trees on Duplessis Patch Lane. We, we had, you see in your update, if you've gotten your pack, we did actually have a response from uh, Network Rail with yeah. regards to camping. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I read it. Yes. 
you know, basically they're going to do it anyway. When they're going to do some more. Yeah. There was quite a bit that came out of that meeting yesterday, Cheryl. Yeah. The trees uh, actually were being felled as we as we went to the meeting anyway, so that was going ahead. But apparently they've had to put a stop on some because they've uh, got to check the BT wires under the ground. Oh, right. so if you recall, they did a lot of this. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they did a lot of utility trenches yeah. last autumn, was it? Yeah. And, and now they found uh, stuff that means the trees uh, can't be felled, so there's a stop on them. Uh, there was also some comments made that they're going to go ahead and put some bus stops in, uh, which are very close to the junction as you go into Bush Avenue. And what it means is, while they're programming that work in, they, they can't have any traffic using <laughs> <laughs> so it's now got to be diverted up the Oscar Lane and, and along the So there's got to be a diversion of traffic, buses, etc., going up to Littlestone Lane, through the King's Way, coming back out onto Gifford Crescent. Uh, there's also some doubt on the camber of the road, although they think they've got it right, I think to get the full, they're going to have to go back considerably more than what they're saying that they intend to, but that will all have to be looked at again. Um, meanwhile, we have a CEF meeting on the 1st of uh, February, and we have one of the officers coming along. And I wouldn't like to be in his shoes for all the tears, you know, but there you are. Uh, he's going to have to contend with residents on this one, and there's a fair few people that are not very happy, uh, as you saw yesterday, um, Sharon, at the meeting. Yeah, definitely. And as you know, Tony, uh, for just reasons, some yeah. of the residents are really, well, they, they've had to put up with a hell of a lot, and they're going to have to put up with a hell of a lot going forward as well, because... The bridge is not particularly attractive. Uh, whether they'll get compensation, officers have implied that they could be eligible for double glazing, I think it would be more like triple glazing, uh, and some compensation. But they very quickly say, well, of course, that's not the remit of this particular committee. So I pushed yesterday so for the... Uh, residents to be given the contact details of the officers specifically who they've got to liaise with for the compensation. Don't wait until it's all done and dusted and then somebody turn around and say, well, you know, we've never really committed to giving you compensation. If there's going to be any question of it, then put her in touch with the people now. Let's have some names. Okay, thank you for that. Alright. Um, the next point is point 10 to deal with matters relating to health and safety, as it's still unknown. Okay. And the um, final point, which, which is 11, to confirm the date and the time of the next meeting, which is Wednesday the 24th of February 2021 at 7pm. And hopefully we'll be all out of lockdown by then. Or not? No. Not, yeah. Used eighth of March now, isn't it? Yeah, the schools won't be going back until at least the eighth of March, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, um, right. the six weeks. Yeah. I have to call you Mystic Mystic Terry. I was eight on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I must say that I've um, cancelled my TV license, so I don't look at the I don't look at the TV anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I got sick and tired of all the. Uh, of all the ludicrously uh, biased um, reporting, so um, so I'll cancel it. You're not in touch. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> how do I believe? <laughs> okay. Sorry, Sharon. 
I was just afraid at night when you have to be supposed to meet me now. Uh, yeah, absolutely, but you've suddenly gone um, a little bit sort of uh, vibrating for some reason. But anyway, we're closing now anyway, aren't we, if everyone's happy. So, um, good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. See you soon. Bye.